What we call barbaric ritual, the Hisho call noble tradition. What we call brutal, they call just. What we call slaughter, they call glory. The Hisho have an obsession with blood, whether offering their own or sacrificing an enemy. And whether they rule the galaxy and demand tribute from lesser nations or die in the effort to do so, they will consider their crusade successful. For their traditions demand either your blood or theirs. Endless Space, a new 4x strategy game in the vein of Masters of Orion and Galactic Civilizations 2. Does this game stand up to these legends of the 4x space genre? Mm, I'll leave that up to you. I've never actually played Masters of Orion 1, 2 or 3, though I am actually kind of thankful I've not played 3. And despite wanting it, I have never actually played Galactic Civilizations 1 or 2. So I am a poor person to say, this game's better or this game's worse. But I do have an opinion about this game. Now, before I start, I feel obligated to mention the um, funny diplomacy. Why is it funny? Because... Oh god, it seems that the AI was very interested in making one-sided deals. And by one-sided I mean, one turn they asked me to give them a bit of dust water in order to have some antimatter. Naturally, when I took a closer look at the agreement and saw that they were asking for one dust water, to which they'd give me four antimatters, I agreed! I really agreed! After all, four of a specific resource means that I have a monopoly which grants me bonuses. The very next turn they seemed to have changed their mind. They asked to give back the dust water and get the antimatter back. I disagreed to this quite violently. Well okay it wasn't a violent disagreement seeing as we weren't actually at war we weren't even at well, I wouldn't even say we were cold warring, which is a neutral status in this game. No, I just disagreed. The very next turn, they asked me for the antimatter and won't give me anything in return. This one I really did disagree with. I mean, what the hell? Why would I give you my antimatter for free? The turn after that, just to really take the piss. Give us your antimatter. And while you're at it, also give us the other supplies of dust water that you have. And your blimmin' artificial intelligence, whatchamacallit. What? You're asking me to give you pretty much every resource I have that isn't part of the standard for resource management. You're asking for everything but my science, my money, and my industry and food. Uh, yeah. I'm really going to do that? No. This carried on for a while, before another empire completely wiped out that empire. And then they started asking for stupid decisions like that. Oh, could you give us this, this and this? Well, be nice. We're asking you politely. Bugger off! If I want to give you something, I'll give it to you. I'd have to register myself as a charity first, but I'd give it to you then. <laughs> no. Yeah, the uh, the diplomacy needs just a wee bit more work. Especially seeing as if I asked any of these things, I'd be insulted for daring to ask such one-sided agreements. Now, we shall discuss the battles. The battles are very nice to watch. I say they're very nice to watch because I didn't really feel like I was very involved in the battles. The battles were essentially cutscenes. Oh, you get some strategic decisions. At the beginning of each phase, you have to determine what you want to do. So it's long range phase, I want to do this particular dose of sabotage versus this offensive maneuver. And if I'm lucky, my 
offense or defense or sabotage will counteract their tactical maneuver. More often than not, we just both get our advantages and they affect different things. I've got more accuracy, they've got more shielding. Fair enough. I will admit I do make for nice views to watch. One of my problems with this game is that my people were very, very disapproving of me. I had overpopulation disapproval. Okay, fair enough, I can understand that. So I expand. I immediately got expansion disapproval. And then I got more expansion disapproval. It wouldn't stop accumulating. I had to lower my taxes to near nothing. I was making a loss because in order to prevent rioting on my planets, I had to lower my taxes that much. Why? I had to expand and my people were disapproving of it. Very, very disapproving. It got really aggravating. And I do mean really aggravating. There was a way to research away that disapproval of expansion. I couldn't get to it for about 300 odd turns because I couldn't expand far enough, get enough science to do so. In order to get the bloody expansion disapproval removal research, ugh, that's mouthful, I had to expand, get planets to focus on science, of course expanding got me the expansion disapproval and <laughs> I couldn't win. My people were essentially rioting against me for expanding but I had to expand in order to get rid of the disapproval. My people hated me. And as you can see from the footage I've put up here, I had this dinky little empire. My empire sucked so badly. It wasn't even funny. And of course it didn't help that my neighbour was the biggest empire in the galaxy. That big red empire there made up of the United Empire Empire. Yeah, that was a... I'm not joking about that. When I first met them it went, You have met a new empire. The United Empire Empire. I get that you're trying to put empire at the end of each race to mark that they are an interstellar empire, but when they have empire in their name, it's a bit redundant, don't you think? Ah, oh, all hail the United Empire Empire. Well, can't you just call them the Terrans? Or the Confederation? Or something other than United Empire? Because then you just got the United Empire Empire every time you bump into another race that happens to be the United Empire. But I couldn't expand, and this game, unlike Galactic Civilizations, from watching gameplay of it, you can't just go off willy-nilly exploring the universe, you have to follow these interstellar threads. The interstellar threads are the connections between the various systems in a constellation. You can't leave your constellation until you research a way to travel through wormholes. This restricts you in that you have to follow these lines, which, okay, I like that. It means that you actually have strategic value for planets. You can have this planet and it will actually have a strategic value because it's a bottleneck into your territories. This way you can focus the majority of your fleets on that one planet and your systems will be better defended for it. At least until research comes across for better travel which allows you to not rely on the threads unless it's actually quicker. On the other side though, <laughs> this meant that I couldn't expand beyond my constellations because I had a giant empire that I had to get through the territory of in order to get anywhere. I was just unlucky, but I could admit that I suck at this game. I suck at 4x strategy. Does this mean that I think this is a bad game? No. I think if you're actually any good at 4x strategy, you might like this game. Oh hell, I like this game, and I'm crap at 4x strategy. Do I recommend this game for you? Yeah, I actually do. It's on Steam for 27 quid. Go get it.
This is Solon Outlander signing out. They're not so united, the planets of this united empire. It's more a gaggle of unruly imperial corporations run by insolent dukes. But their armies are strong, their economy is efficient, and their ships are powerful. I fear that they may be the ones who will finally unite or dominate the galaxy. They'll turn it into a shrine to the gods of commerce. A profane church with Emperor Maximilian Zelevas as its high priest. <laughs> <laughs>